Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com essential training. This series is dedicated to topics I feel are essential to understand for the software that we use every day as, as designers. Uh, today's essential tip is for InDesign and it's on the importance of understanding scripting and its sort of role in your workflow. Um, so scripts are often overlooked in InDesign because they're kind of hidden here and a lot of people don't sort of equate design with scripting and coding and all of that just don't tend to mesh like oil and water. Uh, but really, if you go down to your window utilities and pop open scripts, you can see that the application already comes with some samples of some scripts here. Um, and really, everything that InDesign is prepared to do is essentially a script. It's just sort of coded into the program to behave that way. So when you're in the align palette and you align something to the left side of the page, that's really no different than running a script that detects the size of the box, detects the size of the page, and then just makes sure the two are the same. Um, so if you look at these scripts that they include, they have things like crop marks as a script. Um, so if you have some object and you hit the crop mark script, it'll ask what, what kind of crop marks do you want? It lets you have some options. You hit okay. And there you go. It draws them on there for you. Um, if you have paths and things, there's all sorts of different stuff in here for exporting stories or making a grid or whatever neon is. I'm sure that there's documentation somewhere on a lot of these. Um, but when you run these scripts, it basically sets you up to uh, do multiple actions much quicker. And that really is the sort of bread and butter of why scripts are important. Um, if you're familiar with programming and stuff, you can actually get in there and hit edit on any of these scripts and modify things. It'll pop open the extend script toolkit and you can actually type it. It's all very similar to JavaScript. It might even, I think it is JavaScript. It's just JSX. Um, this is a script that I wrote specifically for handling just my YouTube thumbnails. Um, and I do it because when I pop this open, it's this little tool that I've written where I can revise it and it just captures some very basic information about my thumbnail in terms of its width, its height, um, what number tutorial it is that I've typed, and then what the topic is that I've covered. And when I embed that information into the page, it allows me to quickly export um, comps of all my pages and it just takes the file name and builds it based on the information that I typed into my script. So thumbnail 01, non-destructive editing, thumbnail 02, blurring and feathering and so on. And it just, it saves me from having to export something called page one and then rename it later. Um, you'll see too that it exported it to a folder that I already predefined. Um, I can pick a final and it'll package up all the files related to it and dump them into a folder. Uh, it seems like something small, but it's one of those things where if you save five minutes on every file you do and you work on 400,000 files over the course of your life or something, you're saving incredible amounts of time. You just might not be thinking about it that way. Um, and beyond that, usually in InDesign, if you start working on something and you think, hey, this is kind of tedious, hey, isn't there a way that I could dot, 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 just go to Google and look it up. There will be scripts for all sorts of things. Um, I know at work, I frequently do these things that we call lookbooks, where I have to lay out tons of different images on a page in a tumble. Um, and this is not one of them. This is just some weird portfolio stuff I have. But when I do that, I frequently am cropping photos inside of frames and things like this. So like, let's say I zoom way in on this one and I've moved this one over here, and this one's way down here. I wondered, like, is there a way for me to export all of these images with the crops that I've already given them, with their file names and all that? And it turns out someone has written a script called Image Export. You just run that script, say OK, because it needed to save it, and then it gives me some options here, like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I want to export all of the images I have at 72 dpi, with a maximum quality as PNGs to this folder. I'm like, okay, that seems fine. I will say okay. It chugs along. 
And this script is saving me hours of time from trying to export all of these images or maybe export an individual image and then cut it up later. Uh, it allows me to just sort of seamlessly hand off to a development team all of the assets exactly as I have intended to have them prepared. And it's doing all the grunt work for me. I don't have to worry about cutting anything. I don't have to worry about renaming anything. It's retaining all of the file names because I use the link palette instead of embedding the content. Um, it just is like a time saver, an incredible time saver for me. So let me just double check where I put this. So here's where it dumped everything. You can see it just, it dumped all of the different files, all clipped out as PNGs um, to the folder that I had defined. So that's the tip. If you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you want more of these types of concept videos, be sure to check out others in the Essential Training series. And as always, if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.